So I just received this monitor from We Max It, better known as Andy Cine, and it's a 12 inch multi-touch portable display. And it's definitely good enough for a review. So I wanna get into this now. Okay guys, so here it is, here's the monitor. And yeah, it's a really good monitor. So I'm not gonna muck around, I'm just gonna jump straight into the review. It's a 12 inch multi-touch monitor. You can connect it to things like a PS5, you can connect it to Xbox for gaming. If you wanna connect it to a Amazon Fire Stick or MP4 player to watch movies back, you can do that too, as it has built-in speakers. You can even connect it to a camera if you wanna use it to monitor yourself or as a reference monitor. And yeah, just there's so many applications you can do with this, it's crazy. But I wanna show you my main application, which I use it for. So let's just jump into a few other things first, quickly before we jump into the settings and my use cases. So as I said, it's a 12 inch multi-touch monitor. So connecting it with an iPad or a mobile phone, you can get a full experience like you would do on your phone or tablet, but on a much larger display. It's an IPS panel, so yeah, it's relatively okay. It's not too bad. The HD, it says HD on the box, but it's actually 1366 by 768. So technically, yeah, I guess that's kind of in the HD realms, but it's very low, but it's not bad as you're gonna see soon. And you can connect this to um, power banks to power it over USB-C, power delivery, no problem there. And the great thing about this is, is that when I'm taking it on the move or connecting it to my MacBook Air, I only need one single USB-C cable and that deals with the power and the HDMI signal as well. So I'm really chuffed about that. And it comes with all of the cables in the box, the USB-C to USB-C cables, etc., etc., And also with a little kickstand. So all I've got to say then is that it's very slim. It's probably about, I don't know, probably about one centimeter thick, maybe a bit less. So it's very nice and slim. And on the back, you have four screw holes so you can connect it to um, a small monitor mount if you want to mount it on the wall or some sort of desktop mount or something like that. All right, so I've seen online that a lot of people said that the screen is very dim and they wish it was a bit brighter. If you muck around with the settings a bit, you can actually get this as bright as you want it to. I've got it to a good place where it matches my M1 MacBook Air in terms of color and terms of brightness. So I'm gonna run through those settings first. Uh, so let's do that now and then I'll show you my use cases, how I use this with DaVinci Resolve as a touchscreen grading monitor. Okay guys, so we're not gonna spend a ton of time in here, but I just wanna show you the settings first so you know how to get this to a reasonable, acceptable standard. Right, so brightness, I've got mine on 100. Contrast, 75. Black equalizer, 75 as well. Game mode, I've got it on performance mode. Now you can actually make this go a lot higher in brightness, but it will start blowing out your highlights and stuff like that. So game mode, I left it on performance mode. Then saturation, I've got mine on 70. Hue, I've got mine on 50. And sharpness, I've got it off. The sharpness does make it a bit sharper, but it's a bit of that grainy artificial sharpening. So it was best turned off, to be honest. And, um, oh yeah, just while we're in the menu, I just wanna show you this quickly, that the uh, resolution, 1366 by 768, so at 60 hertz. So it's not that sharp, but it's good as a small monitor. It's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. And most of this stuff I didn't actually change here, the Ultra HDR, eye, protect, eye protection, 3D sound, crosshair, I didn't change none of that. Obviously the crosshair will be useful if you're using this as a uh, reference monitor or something like that, but I haven't changed none of that stuff. And the, the options in here as well, source aspect ratio, didn't touch none of that either. And temperature, I changed mine to sRGB. Now you do have a few other options in here. If I just go in, like user um, and different color temperatures here. But I found that sRGB was very good for my Mac. So I just left it on sRGB. And um, that's it really. There's no more, there's nothing else in there. So very easy to set up. And if we just pull back now, and we can see, if you're looking at my Mac and the monitor, you can see that they're very, very well balanced, I'd say, in terms of brightness. Yeah, I've got no problem with, with these at all. Brightness and it's, it just matches nicely. So you can be done, you just have to play with the settings a bit, but go into the settings and you can choose what I've done on the, on the option pages and you'll be good to go. Okay, so we're in DaVinci Resolve, and as I said, there's a lot of things you can do with this touch screen. So if I just go into the edit page, and obviously we can do our scrolling along, but usually I will just probably use this in the color page. So if we jump over to the color page now, and let's say I wanted to do a really quick grade on this because I wanted to just to send it out. Quick edit, quick grade. So what I'll do first, on my normal keyboard, I would add a couple nodes. So let's add three nodes, and then I wanna space these out a little bit. And let's just say on the first note, we want to do like a basic, uh, let's just say uh, contrast here. So we can just bring the contrast up a bit. And obviously, you know, we can, we can go as deep as we want to do, but obviously I'm not going to go that deep. Yeah, let's just bring that back a little bit. 
And then let's say on the second node, I wanted to put just a punchy bit more color in here. So I just put a little bit more saturation. Remember, I'm doing this really quick because I want to just edit this quickly and send it out. And then we'll go to the third one. And then let's say I want to change the color of the sky a bit and bring it a bit more vibrant. So let's go to our color warper and let's choose number 16 down here. And then let's just grab this sky and let's go for, could go for a nice teal if we wanted to, but no, I'm going to keep it blue, but it's a more punchy blue. And that's it. I mean, just that's it. You can do quick, so quick edits like that. It's absolutely crazy. And then, you know, if I have to switch to the timeline, if I want to scrub through the timeline, I can just scrub through and see. I think that's fine. So let's say I wanted to um, copy this now, copy this grade over to the second clip. So just tap on the screen as you would do as normal, grab still, and then let's bring that over here and then let's go to our gallery and then just drag that in and I can just drop that in there and then we're done. So it's kind of like editing on, on a, like an iPad. It's crazy, but I really do like it for quick, really quick things. You know, you can do see things really quick, but let's just say the sky is a bit too much on here. So let's go into the color warper. I just want to bring that back a little bit because it's banding a bit, obviously, in this 8-bit footage. This was on my Olympus. In fact, I don't like that at all. So I'm actually going to reset this node because it's too much. So I could just reset that node and bring it back. And yeah, there's, there's, um, it, it's crazy. Like it's just like editing on an iPad, but you're using DaVinci Resolve. I actually love it. So that's the kind of way I use this monitor on the cut page with DaVinci Resolve. It's easy with the speed editor and then using this as well. You can even, you know, just scroll along your timeline. It's like you don't have to really grab for the mouse anymore. You, you can just quickly just tap. If I wanted to see this clip here, I can just tap that one and then just scroll through it. You see how, you see what I'm saying, how easy it is, or just even play it. Let's play that right there. It's just so easy. So that's why I kind of love this monitor, and I wasn't expecting a lot from it, but using it with DaVinci Resolve is actually quite nice. Now, it's not perfect. There's not, there's a lot of things I wouldn't do. I wouldn't do like a deep edit or grade with this, but for basic stuff and just moving around, or if you're already on a certain part, you don't want to touch your mouse or whatever, it's very easy to work with this. So working with an iPad or a phone or anything else like that is just going to be a great experience.